Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Recently, we've gotten a couple of questions about the battleship's turning radius. Um, these questions are coming in through our Facebook page, which if you just look me up on Facebook, you'll find the page. There's a link to it in the description below. Uh, basically, the amount of comments on YouTube are too much for me to answer. So if you check us out on the Facebook page, um, I should be able to get back to you in a more timely fashion there. But several people are asking about the turning radius of these ships. Is it good? Is it bad? Uh, and a lot of sources say that IO-class battleships have a very good turning radius. So first off, we are in the after steering compartment of Battleship New Jersey on the starboard side. So this is the starboard side rudder post with one of our two rudders coming out the bottom here. And these hydraulic rams that you saw in the forward part of these rooms are what are actually turning the rudder left and right. The rudder can go about 35 degrees in either direction, although you typically wouldn't turn it more than uh, maybe 33 degrees because if you turn it too far over, there's always a fear that it'll jam in that position. First off, turning radius is more accurately known as a tactical diameter. So it's what is the tightest full circle you can turn. And the number is the diameter of the circle that the ship will turn in at high speed when she's doing a hard over turn. You guys might have seen uh, pictures of Nimitz class aircraft carriers doing these on tests where, where they'll turn over and the whole flight deck will be at an angle and uh, it's something like a third of a mile it takes them to make a turn like that. So um, the things that impact that, one, your rudder size and your number of rudders have something to do with it. Two, your speed has something to do with it. The higher your speed, the larger your tactical diameter is going to be. And three, the length of your ship. Really long ships are going to have a wider tactical diameter than really short ships. Uh, and more accurately, I should say, ships with really high length to beam ratios. Our length is 860 feet at the waterline. Our beam is about 108 foot. So we've got an eight point something length to beam ratio. That's really great for going at high speed, but in theory, that's going to be less good for maneuverability and sea keeping. So everybody says Iowa class battleships have the turning radius. Really, they mean the tactical diameter of a destroyer. And yes, that's not inaccurate. Uh, so let's compare the Iowas to a couple of other ships. And these ships, if you have Freedmen's US battleships, carriers, cruisers, destroyers, whatever, illustrated design history, which you can get from Naval Institute Press, uh, the classes in the back of the book, almost all of them list the tactical diameter. So that's where these numbers are coming from. Um, so you're gonna notice I'm using almost exclusively American uh, or I'm using American ships here because I've got those in Freedmen's. I don't have the uh, tactical diameter for Yamato or Bismarck off the top of my head. Uh, but at 30 knots, an Iowa has a tactical diameter of 814 feet. So that, that is the size of the circle that this thing can turn in. However, if you reduce the speed down to 20 knots, you knock several feet off of that. At 20 knots, our tactical diameter is only 760 feet. So here you can see that the slower you go, the more tightly you can take a turn. So no matter how you look at it, the tactical diameter is smaller than the total length of the ship. How does that compare to other contemporary World War II vessels? A similarly sized ship like the aircraft carrier Saratoga or Lexington, the World War II equivalents, which were built to be 860 foot long, 106 foot wide battle cruisers, around 42,000 tons, so very nearly the same size as an Iowa class battleship. 
uh, has a tactical diameter closer to 1,000 feet. These ships were continuously being hit by torpedoes throughout the war because they couldn't turn tight circles and avoid them. Iowa-class battleships consistently were able to dodge torpedoes. Torpedoes were shot at Iowa and New Jersey off Truck Lagoon, and Iowa uh, had a torpedo shot at her by Dirty Billy Porter, the Fletcher-class destroyer, when she was taking uh, Franklin across the Atlantic. So in all of these instances, Iowa-class battleships are able to dodge torpedoes. They don't take a single one. Uh, Lexington and Saratoga just hit left, right, and center by torpedoes. The difference, they're almost the same weight, same length, almost the same width. They have a single rudder, which is common for the older standard type battleships. So how does an Iowa compare to a standard type battleship? The standards are everything from the Nevada class up to the Colorado class that were completed. And they're called standard type battleships because they all have the same turret arrangement, the same bridge arrangement, the same speed, and the same tactical diameter. Well, that's what they're supposed to be. It's not entirely true. The tactical diameter has a little bit of variance, but they were all designed to have a tactical diameter of less than 700 feet. So these are ships, uh, Arizona, for example, is a standard type battleship, 624 feet long, uh, so about two-thirds the length of an Iowa-class battleship. At 20 knots, her tactical diameter is about 700 feet. Ours is about 760. We're significantly longer. So, comparing even an older battleship to us, our tactical diameter is a little bit larger. What about a contemporary vessel that does about the same speed, the Essex-class aircraft carriers? They're just a little bit shorter, similar width, uh, significantly lighter, they uh, have a similar speed, and at 30 knots, their tactical diameter is 766 feet, whereas ours was 814. So they can turn a little bit tighter than we can. They're a little bit shorter. So you see the Iowa-class battleships have a larger tactical diameter than other older battleships and even contemporary aircraft carriers. Why do people say that they're so maneuverable? Well, compared to American destroyers, which have really, really long length to beam ratios uh, and are not maneuverable, especially when you compare them to contemporary British destroyers, uh, the Iowa-class battleship can turn tighter. The tactical diameter of a Fletcher-class destroyer at full speed is 950 feet. A Clemson-class destroyer an older World War I design with an even higher length to beam ratio is closer to a thousand foot tactical diameter at 35 knots. The Iowa class has a really good turning radius. And this is true, especially when you consider their high speed and long length, with both, which both work against turning radius. Um, but compared to other similar sized ships, they have a much wider turning radius. However, if you compare them to contemporary destroyers, they have a narrower turning radius, which is a, something that people often cite. Narrower turning radius than a destroyer. And that is uh, correct. The destroyers go a little bit faster, uh, an even higher length to beam ratio than in Iowa. Uh, and American destroyers have wider turning radiuses than, or tactical diameters, than their European counterparts. And, and then they really should for their submarine hunting role. So, um, the takeaway from this is, yeah, the Iowas are pretty tight turners. They're, they're nothing spectacular compared to contemporary ships, but they should have a much wider tactical diameter. But thanks to their twin rudder design, they're able to be much more maneuverable than a ship their side should be. So have you guys ever heard this myth of the Iowa class's turning radius before? Let us know in the comments section down below. Can you think of, uh, have you been able to find the tactical diameters of other warships? Let us know. Let's see how they compare to the Iowas. If you have any questions and nobody's getting back to you on the YouTube page, there's a link to my Facebook page in the description below. Uh, I might be able to get back to you with an answer there much quicker than here on the YouTube channel. 
Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support, and there's also a link below for ways you can donate if you'd like to continue supporting the museum. You can also support our channel by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us. Thanks for watching.